My name is Madeline Kenyon, and I study biology at Ohio University. This study is part of a larger bobcat ecology study funded by the Ohio DNR, and is specifically looking at the habitat suitability and connectivity of a recolonizing bobcat population in Ohio. The focus of this project is the Ohio bobcat, a native carnivore of Ohio. Bobcats were extirpated from the state in the mid-1800s due to extensive loss of forest habitat, land use disruptions, and overharvesting. As bobcats had begun to recolonize Ohio after more than a century of absence, a lot of citizen observations and road-killed animals have begun to paint a picture of the expansion of Ohio bobcats, which you can see in Figure 1. Past research showed that as of 2010, there were two genetically distinct population clusters in Ohio, an eastern cluster with West Virginia colonists and a southern cluster with Kentucky colonists. Yet, there has not been any attempt to assess habitat suitability for bobcats in Ohio or their maximum expansion potential, which are necessary to make informed decisions in management of the species, its habitat, and its conflict with humans. In this study, we used over a thousand citizen-collected observations, most of them in the last two decades, to understand the relationship between the bobcat and their habitat, to understand factors that drive suitability, such as land cover or human impact, and develop a habitat suitability model. This information then offered the opportunity to evaluate the connectivity of habitat to act as dispersal pathways and gene flow throughout the state of Ohio. The, to build habitat suitability models, we used long-term sighting data from camera trap sightings and direct observations collected by ODNR from 2000 to 2019 and the 2016 National Land Cover Dataset to evaluate land cover types that potentially affect bobcat habitat suitability, forest, pasture, crop, and herbaceous. We used buffers around observation points equal to the mean core home ranges and generated random points outside these buffers for non-presences. We found that the highest habitat suitability for bobcats was in areas with high proportion of forest, low proportion of crops, and a high proportion of pasture, which can be seen in figure two, displaying the standardized odds ratios from the best model. Proportion of herbaceous natural vegetation was not significantly associated with high habitat suitability. This habitat model shows that bobcats are habitat limited outside the forested area of eastern and southern Ohio, and that the population, while likely still expanding, has limited additional space for dispersing to new areas. However, there have been recent sporadic bobcat observations in western and central Ohio, which brings up the important question of what drives habitat connectivity for dispersing animals and whether dispersal corridors outside the current Ohio range can be identified. We used the circuit theory-based software CircuitScape 4.0 to analyze habitat connectivity between five regions in Ohio, the southern and eastern clusters, as well as other locations in southwestern, northwestern, and northeastern Ohio with re recent sightings. Using the habitat suitability as a habitat resistance layer for connectivity we found multiple dispersal corridors between these subpopulations and populations. The southern and southeastern subpopulations have a high flow between them due to highly suitable forest cover. Between the southern and southwestern Ohio nodes, connectivity was lower and concentrated along the Ohio River Valley, which is one of the potential pinch points and corridors bobcats disperse through to avoid traveling through agricultural and urban development in that area. Central Ohio is dominated by agriculture and there is low to no connectivity, which can be seen as the blue areas in Figure 5. However, we identified several potential corridors in central Ohio where there is high flow of movement, mostly associated with small forest patches and riparian forests, which are likely used as dispersal corridors by bobcats, which you can see in Figure 5 as the red pathways. The red corridors across the whole state coincide very closely with verified sightings in Figure 1 and also with roadkill sightings. These findings add to existing knowledge about the recolonizing and expanding bobcat population in Ohio and are important from a management perspective. While the bulk of the population is likely to be confined in high suitability habitat of eastern and southern Ohio, the connectivity corridors between these areas and other regions of Ohio and beyond into Michigan and Indiana are likely very important for the regional population. 
These corridors act as conduits for dispersers across the state and between Ohio and neighboring states. Thus, habitat degradation or increased mortality in these areas of connectivity can limit the scope of population expansion. These findings also highlight the need to closely monitor the marginal suitability areas to understand the persistence of animals in such areas, as well as the corridors identified in central Ohio. The suitability map will form the basis of a population viability model, which is currently under development that will explore different management scenarios that involve different levels of sustainable trapping and additional road mortality. As the population continues to expand, bobcats are becoming more visible to humans, and a thorough evaluation of bobcat ecology and their role in the Ohio ecosystem is important to, to ensure a stable future for Ohio's bobcats.